Okay, let's look at question two from Limpopo, June 2019. Consider the following substances, C90, NaCl, CO2, Fe, H2O. So this is a carbon buckyball. This is table salt, this is carbon dioxide gas. This is iron metal and this is water. Write down a substance from the list above that is the following, a molecular structure. So to be honest, this is a molecular structure, C90, but in this question, it falls into the category of the covalent network structure. If you can count the atoms, it is supposed to be a molecular structure. And because they can count 90 atoms, it should be a molecular structure. But if you look in the memo, it's going to tell you carbon dioxide, okay, and water. So these are the two most obvious answers for this one, carbon dioxide and water. But in actual fact, the C90 would also technically be correct. Which is the metallic structure? It's iron. Remember, you have to know the first 36 elements. The covalent network structure, they've put down C90. But in actual fact, this is not. This is a buckyball. It's a discrete molecule. So it's wrong, but it's the most likely answer. So if you're in the test and you see something like this, put what's the most likely answer. And this is the one that's closest to it. The ionic network structure is the sodium chloride or table salt. That's a, a normal ionic structure. The sodium's lost one electron, the chlorine's gained one electron, so it is an ion. Now it says draw the Lewis dot diagram for the carbon dioxide molecule. So in this one, the carbon has to go in the middle. You can see I've already got the diagram here from the memo. Carbon, if you have a look, you only draw in the Lewis dot the valence electron. So if you look at the old numbering on your periodic table, you'll see carbon has a valence of four. So these crosses are the four carbon electrons. And oxygen has six outer electrons. It's in the sixth column by the old numbering. So the trick here is, is that this has a double bond. In order for the carbon to be fooled into thinking it's got a full octet with eight electrons, it has to form a double bond. So there's actually two pairs of electrons being shared between the carbon and the one oxygen and the other two pairs being shared between the carbon and the other oxygen. You have to put, choose the central atom based on electronegativity and you get the number of the electronegativity from your periodic table and then you draw the valence electrons and then you rotate from the outer atom valence electrons in until everybody believes it's got eight electrons. So if you look at the oxygen, two, four, six, seven, eight. And this oxygen, two, four, six, seven, eight. And if you look at the carbon, two, four, six, eight. So every atom in this believes it's got eight electrons through the double bond between the carbon and the oxygen. What type of chemical bond is in water? This is a covalent bond because electrons are shared, not taken. Now this one for three marks wants you to show the formation of sodium chloride. So here for the full three marks, you need to show me that sodium starts out with one electron in its outer shell. Chlorine starts out with seven in its outer shell. And then through means of a reaction, so you have to show the reaction arrow to show that a chemical reaction has occurred. The sodium loses its electron. Can you see there are no electrons here? and it gains a positive charge through losing the electron. And then the chlorine, can you see this electron from the sodium now belongs to the chlorine. It's taken the electron, it's been transferred. And this whole thing here is now a chloride ion. So you draw the whole shape in a box and put the minus sign on the outside. So I would have given you one mark for the reactants and two marks for the products, making sure that you show the charges on the ions in the Lewis dot diagram. Otherwise you won't get all of your, all of your marks. Study the models of compounds A, B and C below and answer the questions that follows. What is the chemical name of compound A? Well, if you look at these little circles here, K plus I minus, K plus I minus, I minus K plus, I minus K plus, K plus I minus. So what do we have here? We have potassium and iodine in a ratio of one is to one. So this has to be potassium iodide. We can't say potassium iodine. This is wrong. You have to say potassium iodide because the iodine 
is now an ion and when it becomes an ion you call it an iodide like chlorine becomes chloride bromine becomes bromide if you wrote the formula here you don't get the marks it says the name this one here has got one carbon and four hydrogens so its chemical formula is CH4 okay this is in fact methane it's one of the things that is on the list for you to remember but if you wrote methane here you would get no marks because it asks for the formula so you have to make be sure that you've given the name where it asks for the name and the formula where it asks for the formula anything else and it is wrong now the last one says what is the common name for compound C Compound C is one nitrogen and three hydrogens, so it's NH3. This is ammonia. This is one of the commonest things they ask you, ammonia and the ammonium ion are extremely common. You need to learn this now. And so if you wrote NH3, no marks, you have to have known that NH3 is ammonia. Now it says to you, many of the gases in air are very useful. An important industrial process fractional distillation of liquid air separates these gases from one another. Consider the diagram below and answer the questions that follow. So we take air, we compress it, it goes from a gas to a liquid and then there's these three arrows showing you when the air, the liquid air boils, the nitrogen boils at 196, the argon boils at 186 and the oxygen boils at 183 sorry these are all negative minus 196 minus 186 minus 183 fractional distillation even if you don't understand the diagram it says to you distillation distillation is a physical process so when it asks you is the separation chemical or physical it is physical which property is used to separate the gases after they've been liquefied it is the boiling point. All distillation relies on um, things having different boiling points. Classify each of the substances as homogeneous mixture, heterogeneous mixture, element, or compound. Well, tap water is definitely a mixture because it is not pure. So all the things in water are in the same state. It looks all clear, so it is a homogeneous mixture. Sand and water, if you look at sand and water, sand is a solid, water is a liquid. So this has got two things mixed together and they are in different states. So it is a heterogeneous mixture or heterogeneous mixture, depending on who you are talking to. And then we have copper. Copper is a metal. It's an element. It's not a compound. So we just say it is an element. Okay, now, this next section, two marks or nothing. You have to know your elements in the periodic table and you have to know uh, what they are. So this is KBr, so it is potassium and bromine bonded together, but we call it potassium bromide because the bromine has turned to an ion, so it is potassium bromide. Here we have calcium, so that part is easy, calcium, okay. And then we have CO3. You need to learn your polyatomic ions. This is calcium carbonate. That is the carbonate ion CO3. And here we have something that looks like ammonia but is not. It is the ammonium ion. You learn about how ammonia ionizes in the presence of water to form the ammonium ion. And it is bonded to a chlorine atom. So this is ammonium chloride it is not ammonium chlorine it is ammonium chloride because this chlorine has become an iron now it says to you write the chemical formula of the following substances and their atomic ratios i don't know what's going on with this and their atomic ratios i think they just want the chemical formula for two marks i think this is just somebody saying you can't just write um, zinc is zinc and sulfur and oxygen zinc sulfate you have to actually put them in the correct uh, amounts. So zinc is Zn, sulfate is a polyatomic iron, it is ZnSO4, because SO4 is the sulfate iron. 
Now, potassium permanganate, this is quite common. It's got a really weird formula, K for the potassium. And the permanganate ion is MN for manganese and O for the oxygen. And there are actually four oxygens bonded into this in a polyatomic ion. So it's potassium permanganate. And then we have ammonia. I see I told you they liked ammonia. Ammonia is NH3. So if you didn't know from the structure earlier, you're unlikely to know this now. And that, I do believe, is the end of question two.